I'm Lady T506. Welcome to my channel. Hello, everyone's everyone's. I am here for The Passage Season 1, Episode 4. So, if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you return and you're a family member, you're one of my peoples, welcome back. I got a lot of answers on this episode of like how things actually work. And y'all, as if, if the episode's going on, Amy, she is picking up more and more of Brad's teachings her. And this girl gonna make it. I'm just gonna say that right now. So, she's worried about Carter. The man in the room next door to her. They've been passing notes towards back and forth with each other. Because he's been having nightmares. And they're more frequent now. And now she's nervous like, I don't know what these people, what this medicine... The day's giving me, am I going to be having nightmares like this? What are the effects going to be on my body? You know, she's kind of panicking, but Brandon is like, but we're not going to remember what we're not going to do. We're not going to panic. She's like, okay, I get what you're saying. But you know, she like, what, 9, 10, 11 years old? She's being, ki got kidnapped, went on the run, seen several people die just to get her to this facility so they can give her this medicine, this vaccine. And now she's being locked in a room for hours only and no time she can leave if she need to go to the restroom or something like that. Yeah, I would be suspicious to it and I would be panicking as well. But he assures her they're going to get out. Like, he already thinking 12 steps ahead. You know, he just ain't gave her, he hasn't, he just hasn't given her, you know, what his plans are. Now, Lear is trying to understand what Fanny's brain, act, um, what's going on with Fanny's brain activity. Like, it's spiking at nighttime when, you know, they're supposed to be asleep and like, what's really going on? It's like, Fanny communicating at night, is this what it is? Yes, he's been communicating with everybody. He's been seeping into everybody's dreams. It seems like as soon as you look at one of them, they implant on you and they can get in your head. Things like that. But Fanny, he ain't, he's nothing to be played with. And he knows that. So, Lear, I mean, Brad, he goes to Lear and Sky like, y'all need to let Amy out of this room. She is a young girl. She needs to get outside and get some fresh air. You know, what's the harm in that? They agree with that, but they don't really trust him going outside with Amy. They already know he doesn't want to be there and she doesn't want to be there. Taking them both outside is never a good idea, but y'all are like, have so many guards there. Like, who can get out and who can get in? Like, for real, like, what am I going to do? Just going, we going to just stroll past the like multiple guards y'all got out there? But I'm wondering, like, the guards outside, do they know what's going on inside? Like, do they interact with the vampires? This is what I'm going to continue to call them. I'm not going to call them the virals or the vampires because they drink blood. Anyway, but that would be messed up. Okay, I got this vaccine and, you know, I can no longer catch a cold and I'm immune to all diseases, but my body is falling out and I can only, you know, survive on blood. And can they even, can they talk? Or are they just telepathic? I don't know, but I'm like... I guess the, you know, what they're trying to do is to where, you know, you're not looking like or being a vampire, but you're still immune. But I was like, that would be suck if that's like the only option for me to be immune to everything is that I'm a, a vampire. Because if we give this to everybody, where's the blood going to come from? But anyways, they don't trust Brad. Like, really do. Like, we're going to let you outside. But anyway, so Backcock comes to... Clark as he's walking down the hall as she does often and lets him know that one of his guards is you know going to leak what's going on to the outside world that means you're going to be arrested and I'm going to be executed so you might want to look out for your boy he doesn't believe that he just thinks that you know Babcock is getting in his head well lo and behold they call him on the radio let him know the spot and he's acting a little weird and when we get to Spalding, he is just fixated on one of the vampires that he's in charge of watching. And it's like the vampire is talking to him, but we don't hear what's going on. And he's just like in a trance. And it's like, do you know who such and such is? He's like, well, yeah, I met him when he first came in. Well, 
Did you know that he was a truck driver for 20 years and he picked up this girl, raped and killed her and just had her up under the bottom of his truck as he went on his, on his like delivery like nothing happened and then went on with, you know, killing for the next five years? Did you know that? He was like, you don't have to listen to him. You know that, right? Like, I really don't have a choice. It's not like we were sitting here and I was taking notes of what went on. This man is in my head. You know what that's like because Babcock was in your head. You know, I know that too because he told me that Babcock is in your head. He didn't say those words, but he should have. And that's what I'm getting out of it. Like, Babcock's been in your head just like this dude is in my head. I go home at night or the bunker on these grounds and all I hear is him. He come into my dreams. He's sitting there looking normal but having conversations with me. So he it's taking a toll on everybody there that's come in contact with the vampires. And I was like, see, this isn't good because now you can't even have a good sleep. Well, I'll be the bad cop coming to you, Fannin coming to you, oh boy, I'm going to call him William coming into your sleep. It's like, I cannot escape this. Like, if I had known that I was, you know, signing up for this, I wouldn't have done it. I have done three tours in Iraq. I'm just going to assume that this is, because this is what Clark is like, you've done three tours and you come up here and this is going to, like, drive you crazy. He's like, I've done three tours in Iraq and I was fine. I come work here. For six months and I'm about to go crazy. I was like, because in our over in Iraq, you didn't have vampires in your dreams. You wasn't a mere feet away from a vampire. That's why. So Brad and Amy, they built a tree house. Why do you ask? Because they want a bird's eye view of what's going on around the facilities on on the other side of the facilities. So when it's time for us to make our great escape. We'll know where to go. Now, he's just suggesting things and they're just none the wiser. At one point, Amy's like, can I see your goggles? Because I've never been to Colorado and there's a good chance I will never see nature like this. And one was like, yeah, but shh, don't tell nobody. You know, she's looking around. <laughs> and she sees Spalding on the roof acting crazy. But we're going to get to that in a minute. So, Clark has not told Sykes that Babcock has been in her, his dreams. Because she was like, okay, why did you stop execution? Well, I called the higher ups and, you know, I told them, you know, I was going to execute her. But it was like, you know, those, you know, the virals are worth like $37 million each. So that's not a good idea for do, us to do that. I was like, for each, is it, each person is $37 million? That, that's, that's a lot of money. So he was like, yeah, they didn't want me to execute her, so I didn't. I hadn't told her the Babcock has been up and down and all around in his head and in his dreams. I was like, this is going to backfire. And sure enough, it does because she calls the people later on. It's like, yeah, I heard you called and told him, you know, not to execute Babcock. And I was like, um, we said nothing of the sorts. I was like, yeah, you had to go check because that didn't sound right, did it? No, no, it did not. Excuse me with my scarf. So, Spalding has clearly lost his mind. He is on the roof. He is trying to take out people left and right. He's taking out the electrical station. And he wants the helicopter to get out. So, I'm guessing they just can't leave the facilities. It, Project Noah is everybody there. You, you can't leave. You can't go down to Walmart right quick and get you some lunch meat and some bread and some juice and some apples and all that stuff. You can't do that. You can't go to the movie theater. Mm -mm. you're stuck on Project Noah land, there's no leaving. There's some bunkers, like a couple of acres over there where you stay in, but all this is Project Noah land, you can't go anywhere. Because he's like, I want a helicopter, I don't want to get out of here. But I was like, if you leave, that's not going to stop William, the vampire, that's what I'm calling him. That's not going to stop him from being in, in your head. He's already there. So... Amy, she was just looking to her, but now she's like, oh, snap, there's a dude on a roof with a gun. So this is like Brad, like, okay, this is our time to make our great escape. We gonna run over to dudes over there and I act like we need help. While this is going on, Carver is just going through, he's just going through it. He has spiked a fever, he's passed out, he's coughing up blood, he's remembering his girlfriend that died that landed him in prison. He's just going through it and... 
Lear thinks that Fanning is draining, uh, is drawing all the energy from Carter and to himself. And I was like, I don't even know how that happens or how that works. Like, he can telepathically take your energy? Like, can he do that to everyone? Because he's been, you know, he can get into your dreams, but like, he can just take your energy like that? I was so confused, but... I was like, okay, I, I'm gonna need some more of this. Like, he's just, like, sucking the energy from you when y'all are, like, nowhere near each other. That was very creepy to know. So, Amy, she's back in her room when Babcock makes a visit. Like, she's so nice. Like, oh, Amy, I know who you are. Don't you know who I am? Just use your powers. Use your brain. She's like, yeah, you, um, what's your name? Babcock? I forgot what her first name was. Yeah, you Babcock. Yeah, I know who you are. But where are you? Because I know you're not in this room right now. Where exactly are you at? See, Amy, smart as a whip. She was like, you know, I'm in the basement. Okay, show me what you really look like. She showed her. She's like, okay, let me let me just tell you this, Amy. Just come over here and be family with us. And, you know, you won't need anybody to protect you. You won't have anybody to worry about. Like, who's going to look out for you? She's like... I'm not, I'm nothing like you. I don't want to be nothing like you. I don't want to be your family. I have the agent and that's all I need right now. And I would like, if you would leave my room right now, that would be very appreciative. Like, I don't want you here. I don't want nothing to do with this so-called family you have going on. That seems suspicious. Don't want nothing to do with it. So Babcock leaves. And I was like, they send Babcock because that, oh, I'm so nice. I'm so cheery. But you know, she's like, uh-uh. I'm good. I don't want anything to do with you. I have an agent. You go ahead and be gone. Back to Spalding. And Brad, he went over there to try to talk Spalding down and get a little bit of information. Well, Spalding tells Brad that the vampires, they're not looking to escape. We're going to let them go. Like, Brad's like, it's, they can't really, you know, make you do anything. He's like, I beg to differ. Babcock is alive because she got into Clark's head and basically made Clark not kill her. That's how it works. So, it's nothing good going on. They gonna make us let them free. And I don't want to be around when that happens. Well, this is when Clark comes up and just shoots Spalding dead in the head before Brad can get any information. He was like, what did you do that for? I was like, I almost, you know, had him talking. Well, Clark doesn't want his dirty secret out there. Like, he doesn't want people to know that, like, Clark basically forced him to save her. But I was like, mm-mm. That's gonna come back to bite you. Because your girlfriend Sykes is already in called and figured out that you was lying about the whole Babcock situation. So back to Carter. Carter is dying, like, spiked in almost like a 200 fever. Like, you know, he, technically he's a vampire. Well, he's all the way vampire, but, like, he was close to vampire. And he spiked a hundred, uh, like 200 degree fever. And, like, Fanning comes to him and basically, like... I know what you went through. I know you didn't kill that girl because we get to see Carter's backstory. He was flipping houses. This girl comes over like, hey, I can help you sell your house. They get together, was together for months, and then she breaks the bombshell. I'm married. My husband then beat me in the face because he found out I was trying to be with you. I thought I could break up with him and get a divorce without telling you, but I can't because I got this black eye now. He was mad, didn't really want to deal with it, but, you know, eventually he didn't say, I forgive you, but, you know, they stayed together. He wake up one morning and she's dead. Well, either she committed suicide or the husband killed her, and he then placed it all on Carter, like, Carter, he's behind this. And then on top of that, Carter, he didn't really stand a chance in the courtroom. He poor, he's black. His but his public defender fell asleep during the trial. So like the person who's supposed to represent me can't even represent me because they didn't fell asleep. Like there's no way that I was gonna get off of this. Well, I was like, why did they give him the death penalty? Like that seemed a little bit hard. Like life without the possibility of parole, maybe, but like the death penalty, I didn't get that. But he's trying to let him know. Look here. Become a vampire and you can live. You only have like eight seconds left and your heart is just going to stop beating. And Carter decides, 
I want to be a vampire and he became like full on vampire but like he was roaring like he was a werewolf and it was like oh, his eyes was all discolored he didn't dog on it pimp slap dog on it Dr. Lear across the room he's on the neck of one of the workers there like Sykes and like Dr. Lear they make it out but he got blood on him so like does that mean that like is that you know Carter's blood or is that whose blood is this because if that didn't got in your eyeball that means that's in your system that means that you fit to be a vampire too so we figured out okay it's not so much as the you know the blood itself is making you the um vampire the blood that they're giving you or the vaccine it's it's Dr. Fanning. He's the one that's like, okay, come over to the dark side. And once you agree to become a vampire, after he done done everything but kill you to, so you can come over to the dark side, then you become a vampire. I was wondering why it was taking him so long to, like, switch over. Because it seemed like everybody else was like, you know, like Fanning. He got, you know, bit. And like 12 hours later, he was up walking around. And then, like, two seconds later, he was decomposing. I was like, that was really fast, but you know, everybody else, like Carter, he, he was taking him a while. Was because he was trying to fight off Fanny. That's how. That's why he went full vampire. So, lastly, now Lacey and the ex-wife, they already gave the information to this reporter. She was like, she looked into it, and she was like, okay, some things didn't make sense. So she shows them what's going to be on the news either that day or the next day. Okay, we're going to expose everything. They get news pops on. She has been killed in a single car accident. So Lacey's like, we need to leave, and we need to leave now, okay? They didn't got to her, so there's they're gonna be hot on our tail. She, um, the reporter, she had already tried to get them security, but Lacey's like, I'm her security. I got this. But you know, now the reporter's dead. It's like, who can we get this information to? And I'm like, put it on YouTube. Put it on YouTube. Put it on Facebook. Put it out there. You ain't even gotta go to the. I mean, it'll be good. No, I'm going to be saying hacking in this stuff because in this long, we like, it's fake. Like, make a little fake YouTube account. Put it on YouTube. Put it on Twitter, Instagram, somewhere. Get the information out there. So, that was the test that went on. If I left anything out, by all means, leave a comment below. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're returning, you a family member, you're one of my peoples, welcome back. Tell your people to tell their people to come over here and be one of my peoples. This is Lady T signing off. Have a good one.